Bandwidth and hosting for Bagel Tech Big is provided by UK2.net. Web hosting for everyone. Hello, welcome to Bagel Tech Naked. Um, uh, me and half the panel are all complaining about how old we are and how knackered we are and what a long week it's been. Apart from Eric Lang, who's young and thrusting and it's also midday where he is, so um, it's not too bad. We're here to discuss the week's technology. Joining me, as usual, the fantastic panel. Uh, uh, top right. Uh, well, no, start at top left. Dave, James Hart. Hello, mate. You normally start oh, man, top uh, left. I was going to start know, talking I, then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's never, I can't, I'm lost now. Since I started with the wrong place with Eric last time and he got upset, so he wanted <laughs> to be first the worst and last but not last least. Last but not least, indeed. So as... Still, uh, sorry, Sarah. I was going to say, I'm still waiting to be top left. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I didn't realise it was. You can be top ambition, best next love. week when he's on holiday. <laughs> yeah, I'm on holiday next week. You got Eric. Ho ho. Ooh. Uh, James, how's the week been? Um, it's been pretty crap actually. Um, I went for <laughs> I went for everything this week. I went for Ubuntu 11.10. I went for iOS 5 on my iPod Touch, and I went for installing a new Windows 7 machine, which worked. Apart from the fact that every time, every time i have shut it down in the last four days it's installed updates and therefore with a nice ssd drive it boots up in well, it boots up in 30 seconds shut down 10 minutes i'm starting really? to get sick i'm starting to get sick of it ewan <laughs> i was just gonna say i'm guessing that nothing's gone well this week then with those no three, not on the on the whole on three, the whole three no. for, three for oh isn't it or over three as the <laughs> Americans my, would say. my ipod touch I, I had to clear the music out of it and i've, I've i don't know I've, I've googled this issue um but i've tried to copy i've got ten thousand tracks of which i want to put six thousand on my ipod touch it has so far taken 26 hours that's not right because my that's not right no i mean my, no. my ios 5 update was was minutes it was oh, brilliant the, the ios 5 update was fine but clearing out the tracks and starting up starting afresh is just it's just been really slow and i tried it over wi-fi i tried it over usb i tried even recording them in using the auto using the recorder but that just took too long um i think i might have just to clear it down and start up again but yeah. yes it hasn't been a good, it hasn't good been a good week in technology for me I'm sorry, mate. And you got didn't you get your fabulous router through with your three aerials? And it's yes, crap. and even that has frustrated me a little bit because I'm only getting I'm I'm getting home in it. I can get traffic I'll up up to the minute uh, traffic you, news on my router. Hang on. Did second. you get Did you get your dream router, James? Is that the one I that you had picked before as a cool thingy? It is. It is the dogs do does. I've got 600 kilobits up and 64 kilobits down, so I'm using the whole of the internet. Fantastic. Channel. <laughs> so you're the reason my bandwidth went down this week. Pretty much. This is the problem. This is the Will Green effect. Will Green <laughs> recommends stuff he hasn't even tried, and then the following week goes, oh, it's crap. And he has it <laughs> and takes it off. You shouldn't recommend a router until you've used it, mate. No, this is, this is actually this is a, f a pretty formidable router. It tells what what happened. It was quite amusing because obviously I, I installed a new PC, and when you install a new PC, you have a load of software to download on it. And one of the things I hear was the Virgin Media traffic shaping thing. And it started downloading really slowly. And I looked at the graph on my router and I could see it banging the, you know, hitting two and a half meg. And so I went on the website and straight up, it, they said, if you download three gig of stuff, we'll, down, we'll, we'll reduce you to two and a half meg a second. And so they, they were true to their word, the gits. They it's, are. No, the, the one thing that they're very good is they've got their, uh, it's virginmedia.com forward slash traffic shaping or something like that. It's that obvious. Mm. And it's, uh, they are, they are to the second. You've uh, got to do everything at two o'clock in the morning when you're watching Eric. Yeah, they changed it to the time as well, don't they? It's yep. good. David from I Confess I'm a Greek podcast. Greek? No, you're not Greek. Uh, no, that's Prince Philip's <laughs> podcast. That's not economical. <laughs> oh, man, what a night we're going to have. How are you going, Dave? Brilliant, actually. Thank you. So, Got my new iPhone 4S on Friday. And? It's good. I like it. I wish I bought a white one now, though, because I can't, can't really tell the difference in that and the old one I had. Yeah, no, Mike said he bought a white one just for the sole fact that he's always had black ones, and he wanted to notice he got a difference and a different phone. So, <laughs> Enjoying Siri, or have you found any faults? Fantastic. Just disappointed that it's a male, number one. And number two, it doesn't do any location stuff yet in the UK. And we only found that out, didn't we, when we um, all bought them. Yeah, and it's the bloke off the weakest link. It Never is. Helps. Yeah. It is. Wait a minute, I, what? It's the bloke off the weakest link. <laughs> Wait, this is all news to me. So your Siri yeah. voice is a dude? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Wow, interesting. David, British, I you think. got all your answers right. 
But are you the weakest link? <laughs> and is it really is it really a famous voice or it just sounds like him? No, it's him. It's Johnny Briggs. It's the, really? it's the guy that does the voice for the weakest link in the UK. Yeah. <laughs> has that been done? As far as I know, no automated voice like that that's been included as a default in something has come from a celebrity voiceover. It's, that's been it, synthesized. it's a synthesized voice. It's not a real voice. Why can't it be the voice of the no, it's, of the sale of the century? Yeah, but he'd have to record... <laughs> Live from Norwich! No, it, it's definitely his voice, because he must have recorded samples for them to sample from. Mm. For the synthesis, yeah, okay. it's okay. him. It's definitely him because the one thing that we did last week on the Mac Show, you need to watch the Mac Show. No, I, I, I did. I did hear you playing with him. Yeah, so but to speak. we got. To, I got to Mike to say, uh, ask Siri to say, "You are the weakest link," and he said, "I don't yeah. understand. You are the weakest link," and it, it said it exactly. Ah. So it's yeah. definitely that, that would be the test. That it's definitely him. It's definitely did you him. Did you to come back and it, say goodbye? <laughs> we said goodbye at the end. <laughs> he said, "Well, you're entitled to your opinion." <laughs> <laughs> It's really good. The, the, the interactions with Siri last week were, were perfect because it didn't run smooth. It, well, it, it works well in my car. And that's what I've been using it for, sending texts and Twittering on it as well. I've got to say, that's the one thing that I really thought about getting Siri for was the fact I spent so much time in the car that, you know, if it worked well with a Bluetooth headset, it's a winner. Definitely. So, yeah, that's yeah, big. Well, it's good. Definitely. Has but it's, anyone ever done a has anyone ever done a Max Headroom voice like on these, you know, the voices you can buy, they would like stutter a little bit and do that whole kind of thing? Someone's got to make that. That would be great. <laughs> Tom Tom maybe do that. We'll have to have a look. Yeah. Check the website out. Oh, that's another story, isn't running, it? The Jeremy Clarkson story. Oh, if go you on. try running Siri on an original iPhone, you probably get that. Well, yes, there's ah. the other thing, wasn't it? You can run Siri on uh, on standard iPhones. Mm. They're only the only reason that it doesn't work is because of the fact that Siri won't go back and go to the servers. But mm. it's not the in, it's not the in phone processing that's causing the problem. So this thing about the A five chip being required, absolute utter bunkum. Apparently, I knew it. It's yeah, it all works. Uh, beneath mm. David, we've got Sarah. How you doing, girl? The Apple cynic. Yeah, I'm fine, thank you. Had a good week. Had a brush with your laptop. Uh, yes. Cratchy screen? <laughs> yeah, just a bit. <laughs> oh, dear. I know. Now I have another one, building it slowly, and I'm using it for Skype to see, make sure it works all right. So and it seems to be okay, so. And you've been working at home. Yeah, I have. Literally 12 hours ago, that, that, that little netbook was sitting in the uh, in the shop. Apparently, I mean, I've just got three or four followers have said, Siri in the UK is a dude. Yes, it's a dude. There we go. Non UK mm. followers. Mm. Okay. And last but by no means least, Eric. How's it going, mate? Well, I've talked so much by now. I thought I was already <laughs> introduced. What's the hey, point? everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Great to be here. Oh, there's a surprise. Um, uh, how's, how's tech? Uh, I can't say talk back again, but how's late, late night, night tech? tech. LNT, just remember LNT. Uh, it's great. Last night was a very good uh, show. Lots to talk about with this, uh, all the Google, Google announcements and Samsung. Everyone's got Steve Jobs out of the system. Uh, well, I, I don't. I, I, I was reading some more quotes and bringing them back into the conversation. But uh, pr but yeah, we're well. I mean, the tech world's gone on, moved on, and we've there's a lot this week. Just lots of stuff this week. Mm, tons of stuff. Mm. The week in tech. Uh, well, we started off. We got Galaxy uh, Samsung Nexus S two thing. There we go. Picture of it there. Uh, that's come out from the new Google oh, it's phone. Cold. That's due out. Big long title. Uh, we had um, Chocolate Teapot was announced. It's definitely coming. <laughs> it's next year. It's going to be here. It's going to be on everything, and it's going to unify the tablets and the phones. Not to be outdone, Motorola announced the Razer, which um, I think is a bit of a, um, a hit and a hope. Uh, throw back one of the old names just to try and see if you can get back your best ever selling phone and, and apply it forwards on your new product line. And the thing that came out, I thought really got bypassed badly in the press this week, was the Moto Active, this uh, little tiny wrist strap uh, iPod shuffle type thing that they reckon is the bee's knees if you're into fitness, which um, I'm not sure if any of us are, so we may not be able to well, talk about it. It's kind of halfway it. between an iPod shuffle and, a, and a, an iPod Nano, because of course they're the watch form factor, aren't they? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, I've, I've got my Nano here on my watch strap, mm -hmm. and I had a bit of a, an accident with it in the week. What, so have you, what have you done? I wore it in the bath. Oh, is that a fault? Uh, well, it went, and only had it 45 minutes. <gasps> no. <laughs> I put it on the strap and went for a bath, and I forgot I was wearing it. So it went back to Amazon. Oh, and did they change it? Well, I don't had it 45 minutes. I told him it arrived wet. 
<laughs> Busted. I was going to say, you don't see this podcast as being a, a limit to that claim now. Never wow. say that live on air, David. Uh, <laughs> in it, in it where I live. Carrying on with the week's news, Ofcom have said that they will issue three strikes year out letters starting in 2013, summer of 2013. No doubt, no doubt like being prepared, is there? They're going through final drafts now. It won't take that long. Um, if you're playing tablet bingo, then you have a complete set. You are house because uh, you've got the Toshiba 6-inch, which when you do a picture of a thing that's got a black frame in it on a black background, really doesn't come out very well as a photographic experience, does it? Yeah. Um, and, of course, the World Series kicks off tonight. Indeed. So you will be there. Texas Rangers and someone else. Cardinals. The Cardinals. There we go. Are Australia playing? <laughs> oh, there we go. World the Series of joke. Snooker. <laughs> World Series of Snooker. That's a proper sport, that is. <laughs> Alex in the chat room records a Toshiba 6 inch is a colour chart, and that's it. Nothing more. <laughs> it looks well like done. it, doesn't it? Yeah? It does. It's just got colour yeah, charts up left. Pot. Nothing more. High tech bike in the picture, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and finally. I'm resisting the urge, but BlackBerry <laughs> announced BBX. Despite all the crap they went through last week, they came out with their enterprise solution for the cloud, and they wanted to put it embedded into your car. And the obvious <laughs> comments of, really, do you want BlackBerry running your car for you? Because uh, apart from the obvious stuff of it may not start from Monday to Wednesday, um, there might be some other things we can say. Just don't go near Slough. <laughs> because <laughs> why? <laughs> that was where that was that was the centre of the whole BlackBerry. It was. Oh, was it? it? That's two miles from my house. Slough. Was it you? Are you in Slough? Well, Magnet, the posh end. Oh right. Oh, I was only in. I used to work there. I, only, I go in Slough loads of time. I've been round for it's a couple of tea. It's mate. the epicentre of the of the mobile phone universe, isn't it? And what a bus station, Slough. Eric. The, the original office was set in Slough. There you go. Just so you know. We've got Amazon's head office. So oh, oh, head office. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The original I remember office, now. Yeah. Ricky Gervais, the yeah. Ricky Gervais one. Um, where should we start? Should we start with the uh, with the the Nexus? Uh, well, Gal- I, I just want to say Go before on. you start, I just want to say I think it would have been very funny if if uh, someone with a sense of humor working the uh, the AV booth at the uh, BlackBerry presentation had when they made their announcement gone. <laughs> over the loudspeaker <laughs> and the live stream. But, yeah. oh, <laughs> I think the world would have appreciated it. Why is Even it if Rim wouldn't? I don't get that. Why is it a bad time to bring up Ricky Gervais? What's that? Has he been um, shot as well today? Oh, he's been he's been getting into a lot of trouble for using a using a derogatory term. Oh right, he's, okay. he's rejoined oh, Twitter, hasn't he? Yes, and he's very he's managed to upset a lot of people straight away. Oh, good. And all the people who thought he was a bit of a tool now think he's a complete tool. Now, no, he is right. There we go. With his new TV yeah. series coming out next week. Ah, oh. the, the phrase you're looking at is not broadcastable. No, no, probably not. Okay, you're very quiet for me, Seems Sarah. Seen the tweeting? Yeah, I can barely hear oh. Sarah. Sorry, is, is that better? Sarah, talk. Uh, yeah, I'm still here. You know, can you hear me? There Eric? we go. That's, yeah, that's better. Yeah, better. I don't think Eric can hear me. He got a, he got marginally better, but it's okay. Okay, so we'll start with uh, the Gal the the Galaxy Samsung Nexus S two. Whatever you want to call Google it. phone. The new Google phone, yeah. If it's Thursday, it must be another Google phone. <laughs> I, I love the name. You've got to love the mismatch of the two names here. On the one hand, you've got the Galaxy Nexus. It's the Nexus of our entire galaxy, and it's powered <laughs> by an ice cream sandwich. It's where, <laughs> where, where the universe meets. What? Exactly. In the UK, it's Galaxy is a chocolate bar. I'm picturing, I'm picturing like, you know, like the sci-fi, you know, artistic, you know, at the, at the center of the world and the universe. And you got all the, the, the laws of physics connecting and intertwining. And it's like the center of this big glowing ball of the universe is a little ice cream sandwich. <laughs> Inside a black hole. Mm, it's, the, it's the Higgs boson of cell phones. <laughs> Does it yeah, exist? Good. Doesn't it? <laughs> Uh, I mean, the specs look good, don't they? I mean, there's a 1.2 uh, Snapdragon processor. Um, I was surprised at the camera, though. I mean, I don't want to steal too much from the photo show, but I don't think we're going to discuss the camera on the photo show tomorrow particularly. It, yeah, it doesn't really count as a proper camera, does it? It's it's a 5 megapixel camera, which, you know, based mm. on... If you're going to pull a phone out the week after the iPhone has just been upgraded, 
you, f- you think you'd want to push your... Because, I mean, didn't the... Wasn't the Nexus S, Sarah? That's five megapixels. Uh, I can't remember. It takes a reasonable photo, though. Well, I can say you own it. I know I do. I just can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's this big. <laughs> Yeah. Exactly. Now, you photo guys though must acknowledge the fact that five that the megapixel alone doesn't matter. If, if this were the same camera that were, that was in the iPhone four that had backside illumination and had such great lights uh, and color and accuracy yes. and everything and HDR capability and all those other features that that phone had, then it would be okay. But I think you're right in that this is a why would they use such an inferior camera? It does kind of mar the entire phone, which overall I'm pumped about. <laughs> Alex's Alex's thread in the chat room is they're all crap anyway, and he's just typed again they're all crap, and then I mean, my, after my you said that he said still Gal- crap. <laughs> my Galaxy S is five megapixels, so that's a second. That was two generations ago. My desire is five megapixels, and it's old. That's a beautiful thing to say. <laughs> 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 yeah, but you can get Viagra for that, mate. Don't worry. Mm. Um, no, I mean it's it really is that it's like they've gone nowhere at all with the camera yeah. side of things. They've gone nowhere at all, particularly I don't think with the phone thing. There's no talk of of anything, you know, with oh, but, with bang. Oh, but it's just it's just a screen, isn't it? I didn't think. It but you and you're leaving out either. the biggest feature of the camera. It does time lapse photography. <laughs> <laughs> don't you, you want to leave your phone on a time lapse? You yeah, always want to leave your phone on a time lapse rig for ten hours and walk away and not be able to make any phone calls, or or set your phone down and as soon as it starts taking a time lapse, someone calls and you have to pick up the phone and you ruin the whole time lapse a minute and a half in. Isn't that what you want your or phone to do? Nix it. Mm. <laughs> it's it's not really the best feature going, is it? No, unless of no. course you're talking about inside of ear. Maybe it does a picture of the inside of your ear every minute or something, or every every four <laughs> seconds. You can watch your I'm ear just- hair grow. I've uh, just seen you, a, a, a link in the you, chat room of, of Google filming the honeycomb sculpture arrival. They've basically got crappy sculptures of a gingerbread man and a cupcake. And yeah, they always put one up, don't they, in the, in the, the offices? But they're, 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 they're one bloody generation behind, aren't they? No, no, they put the honeycomb one up when, when they announced oh, honeycomb. Marsh, oh, that's okay. Yeah, Stop yeah, no. putting old links up in the... Ah, Oh, I want them to put an ice cream sandwich up there and watch it melt. There will be. There'll be one up there already, I would have thought. Ban them. They're banned from the chat room. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, kick them. <laughs> That'd be a bit mean, it? It's a bit harsh. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, Sarah? I was going to say, shall we down? <laughs> You've gone quiet again, and I haven't done anything this time. I've boosted the volume as well, so it's being amplified. Sounds like you've got a noise gate on. Never mind. Point, point your oh. mic more at your I, mouth, Sarah. Looks a like point a point about the uh, um, uh, the name of it, the Nexus S two, whatever it is, thingy. Um, I wasn't that impressed with it generally at all, and all the features they're talking about are software based. So that's in ice cream sandwich. So and so everybody's going to get that, even me. Special about the phone. Isn't it the size of the screen? It's 4.65. So, give me a Galaxy, Don't a Galaxy S2. get me started on the size of the screen. Oh, they're just, oh they're, why? They're getting why? bigger. They're getting... It's, it's, gotten, it's getting ridiculous. But isn't that it what really people is. want? I don't know. But they're I, still, want this, they're, I want this size. I want this um, size. I didn't think I wanted the larger phone than the iPhone, but after seeing side-by-side comparisons of the size of the screen and compared to the size of the phone, yes. um, when the bezel becomes that tiny and it's just a screen, and for most most of this new phone, most of it, except to get to the bottom with a little bit of a contoured teardrop shape, it gets a little bit thicker down there, but most of the phone is thinner than the iPhone, and it's just a little bit wider in surface area. So uh, I, I think it's almost like a mid-sized tablet. Now, when you factor in that mm-hmm. it has a retina display and not merely is enlarging uh, you know, big ugly pixels. Uh, I think that's that makes a really compelling, almost uh, almost tiny tablet form factor. I was led to understand it wasn't retina; it was five forty rather than seven twenty. No, I think the what we're talking about. I think the Droid, the, the Droid is not retina. It has right. the same size screen, but it's not retina. This this new guy that was announced on Wednesday, it is seven twenty by twelve eighty, and at that resolution, it is. It is 316 nice. pixels per inch compared to the iPhone's retina display, which is 326, so only off by 10 pixels. And that's very well remembered, Eric. Well done. Very good. 1280 yeah. by 720 Super AMOLED. Yes. I mean, it, yeah, it, I just want a decent keyboard. 
<laughs> my real keyboard. You get yeah, a Bluetooth one massive for Massive one stuck to the bottom. <laughs> get, an, get, get a standard Apple keyboard and tape it on with some duct tape. <laughs> That'll look classy. <laughs> yeah. It's been done on Mythbusters or something like that, perhaps. Right. I mean, we had, a, we had a question of the week, and we've, it's interesting that we've got the Toshiba now, the tablet come in, and it's got a six mm. inch, which kind of completes the set now because you've had the Dell Streak at five, you've had the Toshiba at six, you've got the Galaxy at seven, and then the, there's got to be an eight and a nine out there somewhere and a 10. So you've got all you need is Jack, Queen, King, and that's I, it. I've had many on the way out, isn't it, apparently? Allegedly. Oh, oh, oh we can't start Apple rumors already. <laughs> come on. <laughs> I'm not having that. But see, this just we, shows you that the other tablet manufacturers who are not Apple and who are not uh, directly talking with Google or Microsoft, they don't know what they're doing. They're they're just they're just making they're making one product for each possible market segment with with very minimal differentiation and little idiosyncrasies. Like, well, this one's six point two and this one's six point eight inches, you know. And they don't know what they're doing. They don't know what people are going to like. And it, it factors into what I've been saying about they don't. No one besides Apple or to a lesser extent, Google or Microsoft, give a completed vision of what you do uh, in their marketing and to their customer and their, to their sales pitch. Um, they, they really don't know. They're making this product to hit a statistic and not a actual use case. Sarah, just give us a voice. And again. Check, 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 check. There we go. We're in. <clears throat> Sarah's back. Sorry about hey. that. iPhone 5 for 5 inches, they're saying oh, in the chat room. Yes, David, come on. I mean, is this, the, is this the form factor that people want? Does everyone want a bigger phone? I no. think it's when you start using it in the car. Like, I'm, I use my phone in the car. It's nice to have, because my eyesight's going, nice to have a nice big screen to use as a sat-nav and as a you know, messaging centre and everything else. But don't think, cars come with the these other thing is now. that James said about the keyboard, and obviously the bigger screen you've got, the, the better keyboard you can have. Mm. That that's true too, and uh, I I think simply because it's not much physically larger than the iPhone, um, I I think that is a good screen size. If the if I think Apple could go to a slightly larger screen like that, I'm a little even more intrigued though by the way that they worked in a 16 by nine screen. And I think Apple has a problem with the lack of a 16 by nine screen, especially on the iPad, because uh, I think while they while Apple has the the application market for tablets locked down. And the laptop as, or rather tablet as laptop replacement market, that's theirs and theirs to lose. Mm. Um, they don't have a lockdown of the video watching market. I think the Amazon Kindle Fire and a lot of these 16 by 9 aspect ratio Android tablets and phones are going to hurt the iPad eventually for the market of, of kids and even adults just wanting to mo primarily watch movies on it and don't want to have to crop off uh, 50, 20, 25 to 50% of the movie. I mean, Max, and, uh, sorry, Mike, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, and uh, to facilitate that, they got rid of all buttons and they're all just software buttons, but they're still represented by the screen. And so they rotate when the screen rotates. But that's kind of a, an interesting way that they got to 16 by 9 is that they did use up more of that bottom height as interface in lieu of hardware buttons. So that's one of the ways they were able to fit on such a larger screen into a phone uh, without changing the surface area that much. I mean, They've done it by length rather than width. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I mean, Max Hurst mm. in the chat room saying, I just got a Galaxy S2, uh, love the 4.3 inch screen. And I've got to say, I've had a play with the Galaxy S2 and I did like it. I thought it was a great form factor. I'd say it's about as big as I'd want to go for a phone. Yeah, I don't I want to go any bigger than that, but but it, <clears throat> I think that's that's a must-have size screen. I think I agree with David. I'm, I'm suffering from, from old bugger's disease when it comes to, uh, mm. to, to my eyesight. So at, at distance... The smaller text is not particularly great for me. And, Which justifies uh, my just point nice. that 4.5 inches is too big, so to speak. Well, well no... Well, no, James, because this is Retina. Remember, this is uh, th this is substantially. Uh, most of those four point three inch displays have been eight fifty four by four eighty or thereabouts. Mm -hmm. This is twelve eighty by seven twenty with with a, with a with a DPI that's higher than three hundred. And by Apple's book, that makes it a Retina display. So, wouldn't that make up the difference for you? I don't know. It's the size of it's the size of the, it's the size of the handset. I think and when it starts taking up quite a lot of my pocket space, I think to myself, well, you know. Got keys. I've got change. Well, they then probably don't need change anymore, do I? With the with this um, touch to buy Near stuff field. thing. Yeah, no. So mm. yeah. What do you guys? I can... Go ahead, Eric. That's the question. I was going to change the subject. What do you guys think of that Android Beam? The new bump, bump with NFC, and it transfers anything. Well, that the uh, Palm Pre did that. It did. But that was my favorite. Was first to do it. 
Absolutely. I, I totally give them props for being the first, but I think this solves a huge problem that phones and tablets now have. Ever since we had PCs, since the very first ones, there were almost all, there was uh, generally you always had removable storage. You could pop out a document, take it to your friends, your other computer in the office or wherever. And uh, as we've gotten now to phones and, and non Windows and non Mac devices, they can't even use USB removable storage or SD cards for the most part. It, it, it's it's got a real problem. Also, how do you transfer? We, we now have more. We now manage more than one computer in our personal ownership. How do you transfer a web page or what your document from one screen to the other seamlessly and easily? Uh, QR codes are very clumsy. That's always looked silly. Uh, so this new way, you just bump it. You bump two phones back to back with NFC and Android and ice cream sandwich. They will transfer anything. Web page will instantly will go there. Uh, apps, it won't transfer the app, but it'll take you to the screen. Any file that, that a developer wants, you can initiate uh, local uh, land-based games over Wi-Fi with a buddy. Or, and this is really cool, if you want to transfer a large file, you can initiate the file transfer by bumping, so there's no configuration, no pairing involved. But if it's a large file, because NFC is very uh, low data rate, low bit rate, it will automatically hand it off to Bluetooth. The br they've got cutting-edge Bluetooth, better than any Apple phone has. Uh, the brand-new Bluetooth spec will take over and do it at high speed automatically. I think that's really cool. If they can get that as adopted as a standard, that would be pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, but, I agree. That sounds fantastic. It's Star Trek. Oh, no question. But are you really suggesting that there's that much that you need to do? I mean, I, I haven't felt the need to transfer a file off my phone other than a picture that I've taken, perhaps. And more often than not, all I've done is emailed it. And it's worked just fine. It's worked away in the background until it's sent, even at full resolution. And all the other stuff just doesn't seem to, to matter. It's just, you know, it, it, yes, it's phenomenal technology. Yes, it's cutting edge. At some point, there's going to be an implementation of it that someone will like. But at the moment, it, it's just, it, it's polish. Sarah's You're talking specifically again. about the, the bump feature? Yeah, I mean, what what are you actually going to use that for? Well, I mean, you could well all those things. You could set up a game. You could do a file. I mean, for example, let's let's say you're out somewhere with a friend, and you're like, well, we're waiting for a flight, or I don't know what. And you've got like, I've got well, I've got this great movie you could watch, but it's like three gigabytes. How do you transfer that off a phone? Especially if you're in the middle of nowhere or an airport, and you've got no removable storage handy. What do you do if you just bump those two phones together, and they've got the file from you? Isn't wouldn't that be incredibly useful at the times that you do need it? Go on, Sarah. You about to say something? Um, no, I was going to. I was going to say about the fact that you, as well with Google Sync and you know with being on the, everything being on the internet. If you Twitter or whatever, you're doing it either on the device that you're using, or if you're using Google Sync to, you know, sync up calendars and email mm -hmm. and everything else. As you say, photos are really about the only thing. And if you if you're sending them through Twitter or something like that, then you do that on the phone. Yeah, I, I, yeah this is where I, I struggle to see a real world application for it now the payment methods really yeah i mean the, the payment well, methods okay what stuff. about an app you're talking with your you're talking with a friend or an acquaintance and you're, and you're like oh hey what app is that oh here you got it now wouldn't you wouldn't you want to do that think about the extra steps involved to say well write it here's a you know write it down or here's here's the name of it or let me try to go re retrace my steps find it email it to you what's your email address give me your contact info i'll send it i'll put you in as a contact and then eventually like 10 minutes later you finally get it to them no you go and they've got it. Well, now hang on a second, because don't forget, and the iPhone had the bump application where mm. people could bump together and transfer stuff. I've never met anyone that's used that. Oh, I have. I've, I've met some people who were who were adamant about it, just, just loved it. Oh, it's great. It's fun, and it's really cool, and it saves a little bit of time, but I've never, it never caught on. I, well, I think that's a little bit different. I, I yeah, the, I, the reason I never really liked that is because I like to manage my own contacts. I don't really necessarily want the entire contacts card of, of uh, whoever owns that phone. I kind of like to manage that myself. I just want your phone number, whatever else, I'll manage myself. Um, so that's why I never really use it. But uh, for people who like exchange a lot of business cards and you know are extremely social, hyper social, the ability to just bump and get a contact is 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 very valuable. So I think it's it's part of that rounding out. And eventually, you know, you can't really bump NFC from a laptop to a desktop. But I think eventually we will need some kind of a standard for uh, throwing. Imagine like Minority Report style, just like throwing our documents from one screen to the next as we move from form factor to form factor, from phone to tablet to TV to computer screen to laptop uh, to car. You know, I think that eventually there, some form of that will be the future. You can already do that with Dropbox. I was just thinking, actually, there's a if I, I live in Dropbox, I will I've got a folder in there called mobile transfer and I just stick in there and I know 
that within seconds it's going to be... And the brilliant thing, the really clever thing about Dropbox, apparently, is if you've got a large file and you stick it on the Dropbox, it will sync over the LAN rather than over the, over the internet if it's on the same network as you. Um, this could be the next generation of Dropbox. The only, the only consideration I had was that you still don't really get a huge amount of storage on these mobile phones, 32 gig, 16 gig. The, the, the proclivity of large files on them is still fairly minor. I haven't really got anything bigger than about 3 meg on that. On, 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 on it doesn't yeah. take long to transfer over Bluetooth. Mm. But yes, ah, but I, see, new- I do see a point about apps, though. Yeah, and with the new well, and you know, and and if if you were a kid or like you imagine if you're on a car a long car trip with a bunch of kids in the back seat and they're trying to you know bump 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 and they've got a whole bunch of saved games or you know paired up games going on over Bluetooth. I mean, there's a lot of use cases for this. Uh, uh, photo settings, you know, you can share. Suppose you have like a document of uh, your daily itinerary or something. You just go and and you just you, you show up at your film set and you just bump and everyone's got the latest itinerary instead of having to email it. You know, there's a lot of things that I think a lot of especially non technical people for whom email tweets, uh, QR codes is a burden and an inconvenience. I think they'll really appreciate this. And I forgot the other thing I was going to say. I yield the remainder of my time. <laughs> I, I just got this this idea in my head that the, the, the use cases that you're talking about there, yes, I believe that those are real world. Yes, I believe that those are things that people would think about. But in terms of the global numbers of people who would cotton on to that and would use that feature actively, I think you're talking about an extremely small minority. Who would who would feasibly use it? Certainly for now, I think the payments thing will be a huge thing. It'll definitely catch on. But a file transfer, you're going to have issues with DRM and copyright protection on depending on what you say. You're talking about throwing an application across. Forget that. That's never going to happen in an iPhone. You're not going to get movies and you're not going to get music getting thrown across like that because of the copy protection element. And um, you're not going to get anything else as well because of the potential for security and viruses being bumped across to you. I was going to say, though, James, you don't really need more than a 32 gigabyte phone anymore, uh, especially not with Google services, the way that they have that that pinning function, which I think is a little bit more advanced than how Apple does things. It's similar, but I think it's a little bit more advanced because you can just remember Google's whole point is you don't have to sync with a PC ever. It's uh, you, all your stuff's in the cloud with that Google Music beta. Um, they had I forget how they did it with videos. I swear I remember watching them do it with videos in addition to music, but I don't remember what service that would have been through. Um, but maybe it was just a preview. But I think they did that. But the way that you pin, uh, pin and unpin your media, so you, you can do local caching or you can stream at any moment. Anything that you have, as long as you're in the presence of a data of a network connection, you can stream. Remember, this is a 4G phone. So if you're in a LTE area with a, with theoretical 100 megabits down. You really never need more than a, than a 32 gigabyte drive. That's almost excessive for like a, a, a tr- uh, you know, a plane trip or something. You just go, let's say I want this movie and this movie and this show and uh, these albums right here. And you've got them. And when you're done, you just toss them away or you stream the ones you don't have. So what do you think about that? I mean, doesn't that uh, obviate that, the need for... To take that what? to its logical conclusion, though, therefore, to, to share a file with somebody, all you need to do is send them the link or the pin to it. <laughs> and that, that doesn't take any time at all. And that could be done with... A QR code. Yes. Yeah, and pretty successfully <laughs> I'm as well. Taking the Mickey. Yeah, I like you. I really like QR codes. I think they're pretty. Yeah. <laughs> it's about it's about they standardization at the end, though, isn't it? It's about everyone's going to be on the same system for it to work properly. Yeah. Until it's an industry standard, it's not going to take off, is it? Not if Sony develops it. I like no. QR codes as well. Let me go. Let me go. Let's see. There we go. QR code. There you go. You can. Uh, that'll get you to the Bagel Tech website. Yeah, they're that's never going to be mainstream, good. though. I, I saw a statistic. A statistic oh, I've got it on my like, T-shirt. That's mainstream. Yeah, I heard that like 17% of people even know what a QR code is when they see it and have any idea what to do with it. I mean, it's a very low number of people. Do you, do you I get think it's a magic Eric, eye picture, do don't they? Eric, do you get them all, the, do the TV stations in the US actually use them to um, as an alternative for putting up websites and things like that? Because the BBC over here have started doing it. Mm. Really? Mm. Yeah. Well, maybe Mainstream there's a much higher awareness well. of it over there. Uh, if you go to, I mean, I've just bought the movie uh, Senna, and uh, when I was in the shop, I was looking at it, and it had got the cover outside there, and in there, there was uh, there a little QR code on the front as a promo that said, uh, you know, if you're not going to buy this, just click the QR code, take a picture of it now, and look at the trailer later when you get home and some of the uh, distributed features and things like that. The, mm. There's a lot of QR codes kicking around in the UK at the moment, and people, I Lots. think, are using them. I mean... QR readers are, are, are ten a penny on uh, on the the app store. 
And do people, but I see, I think here's the, uh, uh, if I may inject a little bit of a conspiracy theory here, I think Apple maybe is against the idea of QR codes because uh, I, I think that the reason you don't see more people using them and you don't see the average person using them, especially over here where there's no like mainstream media outlet pushing them, uh, they don't know what to, they see it, they don't know what to do with it. You can't take a picture with the camera app and a lot of people don't even have third party apps or don't know what to do with a QR code. When I was I first say, finding out QR codes- I no, I would say, though, actually, to be off, to be fair, Eric, on an Android phone, the latest implementation of Google Plus has automatically does recognition. As soon as you take a photo, because it uploads it to Google Plus, it does recognition to it and will automatically, if you take a photo of one of these things, what the hell's that? Take a photo of it. Google will recognize it very, very clear, even without you having to do anything. Well, so even if it's, a, if it's a QR code inside the photograph. Even if it's, yes, yeah. absolutely. As soon as I take a photo of something, Google will try and recognize it. It's really quite clever. Wow. Now, is that, wow. is that from the photo Good. app or from the Google search app? It's from the, it's, it's linked into the, as soon as I take a photo with the camera, the next thing that happens is Google, because of course, uh, the Google Plus application automatically loads the photo up to Google Plus. And in doing so, I think it does some recognition on it. So if you've got Google Plus on your phone, it'll automatically, as soon as you take a photo, it'll try and recognize it. I'm just going to see if I can find a QR code, but I don't know. Like one. Google Goggles then. That's right. It automatically puts Google Goggles. Oh, I think it might be part, it might be Google Goggles implementation on the camera. But of course, Google Goggles practically comes with your Android phone now. Mm. Mm. I mean, uh, well, anyway, I. Anyway, I don't think it's really going to become mainstream until uh, Apple puts it in their camera app. And I, and I wonder, um, it's curious to speculate what the. Um, you talk about QR summer? codes. What you talk about QR codes until it's in their their app. The, yeah, it won't become mainstream. Yeah, I think they will not be mainstream until it, until it's effortless. Just whip out the camera, snap a photo, and the QR code is scanned and retrieved. And I I I I'd like to speculate what the stubbornness is that maybe Apple has something um, in mind that they think is better, or maybe they just don't like what Google does ever. Well, I, don't I think, <laughs> to be honest, I would say that they probably don't, can't be asked because of the fact so many other people are doing it so much better than they are. I mean, if you look at Red Laser, Red Laser as a barcode mm -hmm. reader has been around for three years now, and it's not hot. I mean, it really is very, very good at, at what it does, and it goes and searches prices on the net, and it does QR codes now as well, and there's QR Reader and Droid, QR Droid, I think, is in the, the App Store, yeah, and they're QR. all free. And they, they're yeah. going hand over fist. The QR yeah. droid's the one I use. Mm. But I think I had it as my cool thingy some time ago. It does frustrate me, though, that Apple has to give their blessing on something for it to become mainstream because iOS has got such a foothold in the market that people do use that to... to because, of course, and the other thing about it is Android phones are, to, with the best intentions, bloody complicated. Apple phones, really easy. If you want to do something on an Android phone, there are so many different ways of doing it. Where on an Apple phone, they tell you how to do it. But conversely, if they don't want to use a particular technology, it won't get adopted, which is a real shame. Well, I mean, right. you say that as well, James, but Max Estin in the chat room is pointing out that Google Goggles is on iOS as well as. It is, yeah. So. Cool. It is, and yet I don't think people really know what to do with it. I, I think that the awareness of QR codes is much, much higher on Android, partly because the Android marketplace and the Google uh, ecosystem and, and, and the whole system of the phone of Android is very much based around QR codes, whereas you won't find a QR code on anything Apple's ever made, published, written, period. See, you know, the, one of the things that I use as the acid test is my wife and my mother. And if my wife and my mother know about something, then it, it's fairly mainstream. And my wife understands QR codes. She knows what they are. And she knows I, what they do. I have a droid. Do. I was watching no, a she's Android got a, an iPhone. I was watching maybe a BBC Maybe it's program. an American thing. Sorry, I don't know. Hang on a second, Eric. Go ahead, sir. I was watching a BBC program the other day. And before the program started, they explained about the, the QR codes and explained what you need, how to use them before the program actually started. I think it was a cooking program or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. and I thought that was actually quite good because, yeah, I've seen programs where they just appear and nobody, unless you really know, you wouldn't know what to do with them. But I thought this was actually quite good. It is help, helping it actually getting into the mainstream. There's a ton of websites out there as well that will make a QR code for you free of charge. So yep. you, you say what you want it to do, where it want it to go on the net, what, what links you want on it, you type the whole thing out, and then all of a sudden it shows you a picture, you just do a screen capture and then slot it into your website, and there you go, QR code. Hmm. I'm absolutely desperate to go onto the drive and get a leaf, because apparently Google Goggles identifies leaves now. <laughs> it's a fantastic feature. <laughs> what, you, it, it, it'll, tell you what, it'll tell you what, um, what tree it's what from. Tree it's from. Absolutely, it's apparently. cool, I like that. 
And I, I don't know if it can do birds, but I can do leaves. Yeah, it's easier, providing the leaves open, I would imagine. <laughs> Here's a question. What, what happens after you take the photograph? Does it automatically delete the photo of the QR code, or do you have to go in and play cleanup? Uh, it a doesn't. Question. It, it it doesn't take it and store it. As far as I'm aware, Red Laser and certainly QR Read, it doesn't store an image. It just scores the data. Oh, I know those do, but I mean, just like basic defaults. Like if a, if a, if, a, if your average non techie user was told to scan a QR code, I'm I'm just trying to speculate. I, I wonder what would uh, what would prevent people from doing it more. And I would imagine that if it if it kept every useless photo that you only took for the purpose of scanning that barcode and then imported that into your personal photo album and everything, and you had to remove them one by one, I can imagine that would uh, the the uh, the fun would be lost pretty quickly on that. Well, I mean, you, you wouldn't be able to tell which one was which either. So if there was any that you wanted to keep, you're really stuffed. <laughs> mm. Right. You look yeah, that's a good point. The bottom left dot. Oh, no, I'm sure that was a little bit further over to the left. I just mm. took a photo of a barcode and it does actually put it in your photo album. And it comes up and reads the barcode. So you've got the number there. Yeah, but and it also thinks it might say, Lily, Lily, ee, Lily, 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 which is quite good. <laughs> well, see, that's frictionful. That's something that, that, that you know, it's crap. Uh, us types, people like us uh, are willing to do, but most yeah. people are not going to take yeah, the time. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm sorry, James, but I mean, if you've just taken a picture of it, of course it's going to store it in your, in, your, in your library, but the applications that read them don't take a picture and store it in your library. Yeah, I've no, no, actually used QR yeah. Droid on, on, on my phone and it doesn't store it in, in the <laughs> I just, pictures. I love that statement. I took a picture of it and look, it stored it in my library. But, but well, the point what, is... What else the point is, is it going to do? If you take a photo of something <clears throat> for the purposes of trying to recognize it, basically, do you want to run two applications? One, take a photo of something and recognize it. Or two, take a photo and stick it in your library. You almost want a, now I've recognized it, do you want to remove this from your library? Or do you want to store this in your library? There's that kind of option. I want a well, one-stop shop. That's my point. No, I mean, I assume that if the way it works is that they think that, okay, it's, it's, a, it's a shortcut way of actually opening a web page. So you scan it using a, a, a QR application, goes to web page. If you like the web page or whatever, you're going to actually bookmark the page. But it does, it does more than that, Sarah, because it will take, I'm just trying to take a photo of, of a product which you can buy from the shops. And if I take a photo of it, Google Goggles will recognize that product. It does a, a shop search, doesn't it? Yeah. You're and right therefore, and therefore, not only does it recognize that product, as in Google Goggles results, it's just found a barcode. And the barcode is for a product. Oh, it actually just gives you the barcode. It's a product. You can do a product search on it, but it also stores it in your phone, and you just don't want it to do that. Well, I mean, I'm I've just at, though a lot. Oh, sorry. I was just saying, I've just used um, Red Laser on the iPhone, and mm -hmm. it's taken a picture of of what I did, but it's not stored it anywhere. It's it's just given me the data, and that's it. Yeah. But what if you, if you could else. if you could take it if you could if you could hook your camera phone into red laser and press a button that says i've just taken a photo of this recognize it but don't store it that would just be so much easier you wouldn't that have would to be use great. a separate application that's my point i, I think sometimes people lose I, I really do agree with apple that reducing the number of clicks or taking out that friction of, of how you get something done mm. is one of the most it, possibly the most important thing for getting non-enthusiasts to do something uh, and until it's until it's that seamless, until it's oh a QR code, what bam and you've got it. Uh, until it's that simple, and then it deletes itself. People aren't going to do that. The example I, and the reason I was asking about playing cleanup like that with the photos is the example I've heard is that who why would you, you know a lot of advertisements now like magazine ads, billboards even including in, in the United States have started to print QR codes. But what incentive does the viewer of that advertising noise? have to click on your, or has to take out their phone, unlock it, open the photo app, scan your barcode, just because yep. there's a, just because there's a QR code, what reason, what incentive do you give these people to scan and interact with your, with your advertisement on a printed page or a billboard or a TV ad? Already mm -hmm. people don't care about the ad. How do you get them to engage even further? And if the barrier to entry includes download an app, learn how to use it, learn, how, learn which one is the best out of thousands. And then after you've taken a photo of our crappy advertisement, you get to go and delete the thing out of your own annoying photo album by yourself you know it's 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 so it's it's every step of the way is a disincentive to do it i mean the the, the, it's almost the 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 going against the whole <laughs> idea of having friendly urls isn't it yeah hmm interesting uh claw in the chat rooms just realized that um red laser can generate a qr code as well 
So didn't notice that before. Uh, Max says he's just said he's used Google Goggles with the barcode and it didn't save an image. So you must have the feature turned on to save your image. And I've got to say, James, if you're saving images of QR codes and, and barcodes into your... your uh, I mean, that's just geekery gone mad. Mate. I'm sorry. That's just. <laughs> I've got just a really good collection scale. now. You you need help, <laughs> mate. You've, I'm you've making a it. zebra. <laughs> BlackBerry uh, BBX was, uh, was launched this week. It's their solution now for an integrated system between Playbook smartphones and uh, also they're saying about embedding it into third-party devices and so on, like your car. Um I, 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 I really just think the timing on this is horrific after the, the problems they had last week. They were always going to get bad press over it. Um, have we had a look at BBX? Do we think it's actually worth it or not? Depends whether they're still going to be making playbooks, I suppose. Well, I mean, there was talk about the playbook disappearing, wasn't there? And mm -hmm. um, uh, when they were chatting about, I mean, one of the things that they've released today on uh, Tech Radar, which is a great site here in the UK, is 10 things you need to know about BBX. And the first one is BBX is not the next version of the BlackBerry uh, Playbook OS. It's a beta, it's for developers only, and it's really not something that you want to have on your tablet anyway at this point in time. I don't see it's a blind, it's a blind alley, alley, isn't it? Say again, Eric. Oh, sorry, David. No, go on, Eric. I just said it's a blind alley. Oh. It's it's a dead end. It's going nowhere. Oh, I, yeah. I was gonna say, uh, I I don't see a possible future for the for the playbook of that entire line. They they no. cannot compete with the ecosystem of um, Apple, Google, and Microsoft. They cannot have a a, a fourth platform that a, a developers have to write for specifically. It won't happen. Um, and and now that we've seen, now that they, they have given more details about their their Android emulation application, the fact that it's terrible. So that's so much for that. If you ask me, um, I, I think it's I think it's a lame duck. I mean, they're saying that this thing is not going to run BlackBerry apps. It's not going to run Android apps. Um, the only things that it's going to do are potentially in interlink for email and uh, BlackBerry Messenger, uh, and and provide voice search and push notifications for apps. That's it. I mean, it's not mm. exactly something that's uh, that's 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 cutting edge or or of any real value to the average punter. So, uh, okay, fair enough. You know, the tech journalists are going to look at it, but actually, the event this week did very little for the tech world and did very little for um, for the consumer world. Oh, well, we discussed the last, hell out of that then. Last ditch <laughs> attempt, I would have suggested. Yeah, last gasp. Um, well, I mean, I think you just ditch I mean, it. You never want just you never want to see Android. any company go out of business, but. I just think they don't. They're they're just circling the drain at this point. They don't know. They 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 don't have. They can't. They can't out innovate uh, what Google and Apple and even Microsoft are doing in the in the mobile operating system space. Uh, they they can't get get those third party developers. They can't woo them with market share or, or, or market you know uh, customer base. Um, and, and now they even lost their uh, their uh, badge of reliability after these outages of, of the last couple of weeks. So. Um, yeah, I think it's now it's Androids and Apples and Microsofts to uh, to to win. I mean, one of the it's things. Like, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say it's like HP. HP bought the Palm OS stuff. They bought they bought this whole product and they couldn't do it. And if, if Rim haven't even got anything new to put on the table, you know, any innovation. So it's kind of it's right. sad, really. Right. Nokia and Microsoft working together. You can see how that might work. Mm. Well, they've released their new phone today as well, haven't they? There's a bit little sneak preview of it, and it's got to be the most unwantable phone that you've ever seen. What's it called? It, it, it looks like what is it's. It? Um, I can't. I found a picture of it somewhere, but it's, is, it, is, this is it a smartphone? Yeah, no, it's the first iteration. Uh, I can't remember where I was when I saw the picture, and I've shoved it into the news stories. I think for tomorrow, but basically, it looks like it's something you get at early learning. It's um, it, it's pretty it's awful. Black? Sorry, did you say BlackBerry or Motorola? No, Nokia. Oh. There's a Nokia phone leaked out. Here we go. The Nokia Sabre. And uh, yeah. it's, it's leaked but out as, uh, as, as the next generation Sabre with the next generation of Mango on it. Uh. Uh, it, should, it could even be out as quickly as next week. Um, but it's the uh, Nokia 800 C Ray or it, Sabre. It looks, like an, it looks like an iPhone 4 gained a little weight in the hips. It certainly does. Um, it's, it's a Fisher Price model, isn't it? Well, that's what I'm saying. It looks like early learning. It, 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 it's. It, my, I'd give it to my two and a half year old to to teach her how to use uh, 
basic programming. <laughs> she pushed the phone button and it says, she's got a Mr. Man phone that probably does exactly the same thing as this. Mm. It, 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 there's nothing that makes you, this is the, this is the, <clears throat> excuse me. This is the problem I think Nokia have really got at the moment is they don't seem to be generating anything where people are going, wow, that looks sexy. And then they've got an OS that most people think, well, okay, you know, it's got somewhere it can go, but I don't really know that it's grabbed me yet. And and it really, you know, it, it, it they're dying a death because they, you know, the one thing that you would have thought that a company like Nokia could do is at least just get something so that it looked good. Go and get yourself a design student out of a local university and say, here you go, is 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 ten thousand dollars. We're going to employ you for the next three months. Design us a phone that looks snot hot. But Nokia used to make the world's best phones, didn't they? Mm. Ah, just, uh, phenomenal phones. I mean, yeah. The, the, the uh, do you remember the one with the flipped open? I can't remember. Communicator. The, the, the seventy nine thousand. The N nine thousand communicator. I right. and there was the one that popped open as well. The seventy five ten was it? Fifty four ten. Fifty four ten. Thank was you. Fifty four ten. Something like that. I can't remember I all the numbers. It was in. It was the one in. Uh, what's it in the film? I was still thinking about the Matrix. phrase. It's not hot. I think I just learned a brand new uh, Britishism. It's not hot. It's not hot. It's not uh, as in S N O T like mucus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd never heard that phrase. I'd never heard that phrase until you and used it either. Well, it's we not, use another. We'll <laughs> use another word. Well, that, well, then yeah. it's a Rankinism. <laughs> yeah, it's a Rankinism. It, it saves me from using the word that rhymes with grit. Yeah, for grit hot. It's a polite <laughs> version of something I, else. I don't thank think you. we have that here either. Oh no, yes. Well, no, you wouldn't. I suppose. There you go. So there's, yeah. nothing, <laughs> there's nothing out there that's that. There we go. <laughs> going back to all these, going back to all these phone launches, is it is it this is it is this week the time of year where they're they're preparing the Christmas market? Is this it? We've had CTA, haven't yeah. we? Was it CTA? No, not CTA. CTIA. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was well, CTA. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's why it's all out right now. Barcelona or somewhere was it? Or? No, that's the that's Mobile World Congress. That's late oh, in okay. the year, isn't it? Um, did you did you look at the motor roller razor? Because the Razor, of course, was the flip phone that was the most successful phone ever. Because America loves flip phones. I and had one. It, I had one, and they were they were a good phone. I never really got on that well with the OS on them, but they they were a nice phone. They actually worked. They made a call, which was quite nice for modern cell phones. And uh, I think that the Droid is on its last legs as well as, and they've gone back to the Razor name just because it's a Hail Mary to see if they can try and draw back in some of those old customers with a familiar name. Good luck yeah. to them, but, <laughs> you know, I mean, again, the the, the, uh, the standard spec on this thing is is very much samey. There's not an awful lot in it that's, that's new or innovative or something that would make you go, wow, it looks nice, it's got a slim form factor, but, you know, is, is this the death row for Motorola as well as? Is it made of metal? It looks like last, it's carbony, fibery type thing, doesn't it? Because the last razor was mm. really nice build quality. I loved the feel of it. It was cold. It was sharp. It was good, and it looks kind of like it's got those <laughs> lines. But Sarah's holding hers up. Wow! In fact, wow. I'm going to see if I can find one. Hang on. There, that, it was. A, I mean, I thought it was a beautiful phone. I loved the keyboard on it. I thought that really did look nice. Have we got volume from you, Sarah Stillor? You've gone again. Yeah. Sarah? Are you on mute? Me? What happened? Everyone's gone quiet. Oh, we've That's all got fine. the I, I guess they probably still can't hear me. Yeah, we're back. Yes, there we go. James has got his as well. Don't you just love the way that the light spiraled in like a, a starburst off the off the milled front? There we go. See, it would a, a brace. Where's my shotgun? A brace. <laughs> a brace of Razor V3s. I mean, is Motorola just is, is this really a hail mary? Is it, is it is it a piece of crap that's that's dressed up in a in a reputation that uh, they can't fulfil anymore? It's just another Google phone, isn't it? It is. I mean, it's the, it's, it's the same kind of specs. Same Diluting thing under the, the hoods. market. Mm. Mm. New phones, Diff new phones. The thing Different is, I thought, I thought Motorola being in bed with Google, they would, they would come up with the next big Google phone, but... I think it's taking time, as, as shown by the fact that the, the, the latest Google phone um, is, is not a Motorola as well. And the mm. ones, you know, maybe the next, in a year's time, the next Google phone almost certainly will be. 
Mm. So here's some, here's something that's that's been bothering me that I don't understand. So you got Samsung now working with Google to have made two phones that we that that we know of. They got the Nexus S, the Nexus S. Is there is there an S and an S two? Yeah, yep. I think there is. Uh, no, the Galaxy all- mm. Galaxy S and S two, but only the Nexus S and S two. No. So you, you had Nexus so and then Nexus S. S was the last one. So that's a lot of phones with to have made with Google with Google's own uh, user interface so, as been branded as a Google phone. So mm-hmm. why? If they're if they're cool with that, if they like what Google is doing and they work with them, why continue to build out their TouchWiz UI and compete with the native Google experience, which seems to be pretty darn good now? Well, I think that's what that's what Ice Cream Sandwich is going to be all about. I think the interfaces may be, play second second fiddle because Ice Cream Sandwich is supposed to be bringing together all these platforms and make it so you can stick Ice Cream Sandwich on a phone without too much hassle. Mm. But the interesting thing is, as Max says in the chat room, is that Motorola's Razr isn't coming with ice cream sandwich, despite the fact it's coming from a Google-generated uh, mm. manufacturer. Right. Yeah, yeah that, I mean, that phone probably was well in production well before, and designed well before the Google deal was done. Yeah, probably. Good point. I'm a bit distracted now because I've just found a 64 megabit, megabit, megabyte... Um, Micro SD card. I want to see what's on it. Megabyte. Yes, yeah, tiny. Is it come out of the Motorola? <laughs> five five yeah. songs. Yeah, exactly. Five songs in flak. Awesome. Really. The the thing about the Motorola. They are absolutely uh, Razor, tiny, aren't they? Yeah. The thing about the Motorola Razor was that the zoom feature, rather than actually zooming in, just made the picture smaller. <laughs> Useless. <laughs> right. Brilliant. Have we got any cool thingies? Would you like to start us off, James? And it's your 64 gig card, I'm sure. Oh, no. Do you know, I've just shut down my bloody phone so I can stick the card inside. It's going to take about six weeks to boot up. I've had enough of stuff that takes a week to boot up. I really am starting to lose my rag so with you're technology doing, this week. You're doing pass of the week this week. Then, can you? Though. No, no, I've got one. Can you come back to me when the bloody phone's booted up, please? Yeah, all right. Well, for you, James, the problem seems to have been shutting down, not starting up. Oh, his phone. <laughs> David, what have you got for us, mate? Uh, it's got an unfortunate name. It's the uh, Logitech Squeeze Box Radio. <laughs> Talk, tell us more. It's a. It's a, basically a Wi-Fi radio. So it's a self-contained little unit, but made by Logitech. Um, it's got a Wi-Fi receiver in there, and you can sync with your iTunes library off a Mac or a PC. And you can also dial into Spotify, uh, Pandora in the States, and any internet radio station. Now, its normal price is about £159. It's quite dear. Mm. But uh, Logitech uh, were doing it last week for £84. They do like um, open box sales. So every other week, go into Logitech's site and it's like half the price. It uh, it comes with its own controller application as well that yes. uh, links for iOS and for other smartphones, Android. Android, yeah, correct, That's yeah, great. yeah. It's got oh, so its what own. Directory, um, what directory does it use, David? Uh, TuneIn TuneIn Pro, I think, for TuneIn the radios. Yeah, cool. but you can use more. I think there's more actually. I think there's there's actually a choice. Excellent. I think Shoutcast as well. The only thing that's worrying is it's only got two and a half stars in the reviews. <laughs> yeah, I, actually, I, I bought one about a month ago and I love it. Fantastic sound. No, the squeeze uh, box c- itself has got good reviews, but the reviews for the, the application are, are pretty ah, crappy. There's, third, there's third-party apps. There's one, I think it's called, um, uh, it's got a penguin in the title. It's made by someone else and it works even better. Linux, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but um, I was looking at buying a Sonos, but they're way, way too dear. But this does the same job for less than 100 quid. Very good. Very good. Yep. Hundred and seventy nine dollars nice. if you're in the states is the is the list price for it. So. Yeah, but it, it never pay pay top dollar for Logitech because they're always doing fancy sales. So I paid paid nearly a hundred and I got a battery pack with it and a remote control as well, which is worth what, another fifty sixty quid. Go for a coupon code as well somewhere on the net. Mm, that's right. Um, <laughs> Mac in the chat room wants to know, James, do you print out your favourite barcodes and put them on the wall? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. 
Absolutely. Sarah. I've got James. Hold on. James, James is like, like, you, you know, you go to the, uh, the serial killer's house and he's got like the photos of all the, of, <laughs> like huge collages of people's faces that he's got, like going to kill or something. James has just got just a whole wall of just QR codes, just pasted on top of each other, just QR code after QR code and just scans them all the time. <laughs> He's got what do you think's about what do you think's behind this 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 thing here? Uh, he's, got like a, the, he's got a he's got a more curtain, than full yeah, size picture falls. of Jesus made out of James QR codes. Wearing, James, James is wearing a barcode. Look. QR codes behind it. Oh, wouldn't that be so cool? Actually, getting a picture of somebody made out of QR codes. I'm going to work on that. Oh dear, that was a joke, mate. It was a joke. It wasn't meant to be a project. <laughs> Didn't someone make a yeah? Like someone made a photo of uh, Steve Jobs, a portrait out of the the parts of a MacBook Pro. Or, you know, they do those collages out of, like, Time Magazine coverage. You could totally do one out of QR codes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Sarah. It's like cars. If you, if you make a MacBook Pro out of bits, it costs 20 times more. Probably. Sarah, save us. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, my uh, cool thingy this week, as I mentioned on the F1 show on Monday, is F1 related. And it is the uh, Formula One.com 2011 app for Android which I played with for the first time during the Korean Grand Prix. And uh, it was a really useful aid to help me make notes while I was actually watching the race for the F1 show. Um, it comes with lots of useful information during the race, lap charts, um, timings. It's also got practice timings and uh, grids and things like that on it. Um, and it, it holds the data from the, all the races during the season, which I found really useful. Mm. But you're, you're recommending the 2011 app? He asked. Which is not uh, well. That's going to go out soon, isn't it? Is the 2012 yeah, well, I'm one sure June? Be, I'm sure there'll be a it, like, but like uh, Major League Baseball do, they do one every year. Um, but it's free, so I assume that it will be free in 2012. I suppose. But don't you have to pay so. for the the races though? Nope. I used it. I downloaded it. I heard about it before the race. Downloaded it, and um, it was fine. It worked fine. Didn't have, I haven't had to pay anything. Mm. Okay, because it's nine ninety nine where I'm looking. Are you talking about there's one thing? above it. There's one above it. It's free. The right. green one. The green one. I'll green have to icon. Have I'll have to green have a look. I'm go. sure there are paid app, the paid ones if you want to get really geeky with the timings. And well, stuff. the F1 2011 timing app at the moment is showing in the <laughs> iTunes store at, at ten pounds. Yeah, I'm not talking about the timing one. I'm talking about the general one. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll have to look at that separately. Then I've shown the wrong picture. Have a look at the link that I, I posted in the chat room. I didn't know you put a link in. Sorry. It may be it's that good. The, the iPhone one is... Um, I can't imagine the iPhone one would be... Uh, it's 20 quid, I think, the iPhone one, something like that. It was at the start of the season. It's down to wow. high price now. So, but, but if you buy the 2011 timing app, then it's... Uh, $9.99, uh, yeah, yeah. Then you have to... No, you can get the nine ninety nine one, or then you can buy it without, and you can just buy the races that you want individually as in-app purchases. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Hmm. Eric, surprise me. Okay, well, I will warn you in advance, this is one of those uh, roundabout, lazy, annoying... Uh, cool thingies that isn't actually really, real thing. but if it were, <laughs> you would. I guarantee you, you think it was it was a, it was awesome and amazing and cool. This is again, and you're gonna hate this because it goes back to what we were talking about earlier. It is part of the Galaxy Nexus and ice cream sandwich. But have any of you seen? Did you get to see the amazing new data management cellular data management setting in the settings menu? No, can't no, say I have. That? It is the <laughs> coolest thing anyone's ever done for data management on a, on a cell phone. I can't believe anyone, no one else. This is a big buildup, Eric. It is a bit, well, I, this is literally how impressed <laughs> I was for a data management app for you, you go to the settings and it, it shows you how much cellular data that you've used for people who have to, you know, a quota that you pit, like you're going to hit the two gigabyte limit and then you'll be over chart or get the charge for going over. You can set two limits. You first of all, you go to the setting, you see a beautiful bar graph or rather a, a line graph with multiple levels, multiple layers, showing like different types of data over your months of usage since your last, over the course of this billing cycle. You can set with, with, with just your finger, with one tap, you can set two limits, a hard limit so that when you go over, it just st stops entirely so that you will not be charged for any more. If you hit two gigs, if you hit five gigs, you set your cap and it's done, it cuts you off. Keeps you on Wi-Fi, cuts you off at 3G. Then you can set a warning level so that when you hit one gigabyte or four and a half or whatever you choose, it's totally up to you. It'll send you a warning saying, hey, you're approaching your hard limit. Be, be warned. 
Then, if you're wondering, well, wait a minute, why am I getting, wh why was this month such a huge data spike? What caused this spike here in your, in your beautiful little graph there? You can click on that set of days, to define a region, just the same way you, you highlight text with the little two uh, bookend style uh, cursors. And then it shows you the, a, a beautiful pie chart rendered in, in shell-shaded 3D. <laughs> And, and with a, a gorgeous list on the side, it very easily easy to see, very well laid out of a, a, a breakdown of what every single app has used, their data wow. and their data type. You can see what's in the background. You can differentiate background data from foreground data. And if you find an offending app that's been using up all your bandwidth in the background, you can say, hey, buddy, you're cut off. From now on, no background data for you. If you want access to the net, you have to ask me permission and be in the foreground. So it's an incredibly useful tool for analysis and and uh, and, and it really empowering the user over how much data they're using, which so far no phone has had to, to this extent. It, it's a great move. And that's... Got a pie chart. <laughs> There's a link in the uh, chat room now. Thank you. <laughs> data usage. Now, that is a cool thingy. That is a nice. cool thingy. I don't believe nice. that you sit on the, you come on this show for 12 <laughs> months doing absolutely sod all with your picks, some crap thing that you found on your bookshelf at the last minute, and then you come out with this, mate. The last couple of weeks, you've just been a revelation. What can I say? Well, it's not actually a cool thingy, of course, because you can't actually download it. It's not a standalone product. It is part of Ice Cream Sandwich. No, so it's cool. It's a tease. It's a bit of a tease, I know. No, mm -hmm. the cool thing is anything off the net at all. Anything at all okay. that's tech-related. So that's I'll take that as a cool one. I think. So when great. can we download Ice Cream Sandwich, then? When does all that come out? They're saying February, aren't they? February, February. March 2012. It's, oh, didn't I they say heard. it's a phone's... Phones made 18 months before that were compatible. So you've got to be kind of fairly careful as to whether... I mean, I don't know if my Galaxy S will be compatible with it. I don't know how far back it'll go in compatibility. Right. Mm. Right, they haven't... Because, still, of course, you're yeah, also relying on your manufacturer to be able to wrap it into their... Um, the crap they put it in it on it, in theory. And, of course, if you're a Motorola owner, you're screwed. Yeah, no, they haven't. I don't think they've given a time frame for when they're going to open source it yet, have they? I sure hope they don't mm. do another honeycomb and, and keep it forever locked and up. And actually never source. made. Yes, absolutely. Mm. Mm. Just so you can see some guys, that's um lap chart from the Korean Grand Prix from the app on the phone. Some of the data that? actually shows you. That's More a lap graphs. Chart from the um from the from the whole race. And it they comes in iOS as kids. well. I've put the link in the uh, chat room. So wow. you can see the kind of thing it does. Very see, there's more, to, there's more to Formula One than I ever thought. There's lines and graphs and stuff. <laughs> I still like touring cars better. <laughs> touring cars is much better. Yes, absolutely, James. You can get a graph of things like the wind speed at the track. <laughs> oh, come on. Brilliant. <laughs> Depends on... <laughs> I didn't really like it when it was just cars, but now that there's wind speed. <laughs> well, exactly. <laughs> I've come Makes the cars go faster. Yeah, it depends how close Lewis gets to the wall. Um, uh, right. Track temperature, anyone? Track Shall I do my cool thingy now? It's yeah, do on, your James. cool thingy, please, James. A little while ago, I, my cool thingy was, was a, a game called Minecraft, which is one of these ones which is a bit difficult to get into, but once you get to play it it's really addictive it's like playing with lego it's like having an infinite collection of lego bricks and you can make anything you like well they've just come out with it for android devices and you can build stuff wow and it really is very snappy as well it's uh it's uh, the 3d rendering is, is phenomenal on it I'm, I'm quite impressed and it's uh, it's you can buy you can you can get a free version of it to try it out, and this version is about fiver. So uh, it's it's got a long way to go to pick up to the uh, to the way it is on the on the PC. But it's a really good start, and I imagine much like most Android apps, you'll probably get free upgrades as they come along. But uh, um, Mo Yang have done such a good job with this, and unfortunately, it's one of these things where you're just sitting in a, a waiting room, or you're sitting waiting for a bus or, or a train or something, and you're just tapping on it, and the and you could easily miss your appointment if you're not careful. It is very good. Very good. Yeah. So it's, it's called it's called Minecraft from Pocket from Edition. Experience? Sorry, I beg your pardon. Was that spoke from bitter experience? Yeah, uh, I haven't missed anything yet, but uh, I know I know it could happen. But yes, Minecraft Pocket Edition. <laughs> Type it into your favourite search engine. Eric, have you burst your ball, mate? <laughs> <laughs> I, I've I've receded into the into the background. 
<laughs> Don't believe that for a minute. Um, my cool you. thing is uh, at ky.com, K-A-Y-W-A.com. And if you go to QR code.ky.com, then you can generate a QR code for yourself. And it's really good. So I've generated one there. And if you scan it, there's a message in there for you. Thanks ever so much. And uh, there's also another message on that one. And uh, you'll probably enjoy that one a little bit more. But there you hey, go. that one was obscene. <sighs> Just turned my damn phone <laughs> off as well. How on earth can you tell? <laughs> I'm like, I'm oh, like the Matrix it. guy. Oh. I, just, I, I look at a QR code and I just see what it says. <clears throat> Oh right. Okay. Now that would be how awesome would that be if you found like a, like a savant somewhere <laughs> someone on Earth who could actually like look at a QR code and say, oh yeah, that's that's uh, such and such dot com. I will lay you well based on the amount that that uh, James looks at them. I'm sure he's probably got that capability. <laughs> Bit of hypnosis. That first and that's one says it. Bagel Tech I'm, is awesome. Thanks for watching. I could just I, I, it took me a little while to scan it, but you know. <laughs> I was going to say I'm surprised like he doesn't look at like enough of them. He didn't actually look at it and know what it says. That, the man who <laughs> The man who could read QR codes. There James, do you want to translate that for us? <laughs> that one. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. What, I, I don't really want to know what it says about uh, about me. Actually, um, all is the that the Bagel Tech is awesome? It's, one, <laughs> it's uh, you can't read out what that one says. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> Eric, you'll have to watch the show back to get that one. <laughs> and get a QR code reader for your phone. Yes. Um. <laughs> UK2.net, the people that sponsor us. You need to sponsor and support them, please, because they mean everything to us. We can't do the show at all without them. Um, they're picking up all the bandwidth on all the video that we push out, all of the audio that we push out. We've taken the mickey something rotten, and uh, we need your support, and they need your support. Um, you've only got a week left to enter the competition. If you go to bageltechnews.com, you'll see two logos that are uh, UK2 related. The first one is going to get you through to their website and get you to buy stuff, uh, which please do that. Make sure when you get to the checkout, you use the offer code BAGELTECH. That'll get you 15% off. And if you're buying a domain or transferring domain in and you don't want to pay the DNS management charge, you need to type in Bagel DNS, and that'll get rid of the DNS management charge. But the one beneath that is uh, a, a link to buy, uh, uh, sorry, a link to win um, a Nintendo 3DS. Uh, so there is a competition running between the two of us and click on that link, go through, type in your email address and you will win a Nintendo 3DS. And it's all a genuine offer as well. So uh, please, please, please go and support UK2.net. We would be stuffed without them. We're desperate for them. And also the European Podcast Awards. Um, there's not long left to go. The European Podcast Awards finish at the end of the month. So please get yourself down to bageltechnews.com and in there there's a blue banner and click on those logos as much as you possibly can and, and vote for us uh, because I think it ends at the uh, the end of this month. So there's another week to, to, to go through. Thank you very much. Right. Where can we get a hold of you, James? On the Twitters, S Y Z Y G Y. I've just, funnily enough, I've just migrated my website and it's broken, so you can't use that. Um, so yes, Syzygy on Twitter is pre pretty much the, my only presence on the internet at the moment. Um, but uh, I'm in PHP. See, I've had technical problems all week. <laughs> Sorry, I'll stop now. Bar humbug. <laughs> David, where can we get you, mate? Uh, I confess I'm a geek .com or Twitter at I confess I'm a geek. Good man. Sarah. Uh, on the Twitters at Sarah Jane UK. Thank you, mate. Uh, uh, <laughs> Lanigan's now officially on the floor. At uh, ericlanigan.com and twitter.com slash ericlanigan. E R I K L A N I G A N. Is that meant to be some fancy QR code? That bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, man. They want the QR code back up. There you go. That's the one that you can't read out. Last chance gone now uh, we'll be back again uh, tomorrow with the daily show in the morning and then we've got Mr Anatko's joining us for the Max show in the afternoon and we've also got the photo show with Alex and Chris uh, as normal um, Kyle's not with us for tomorrow uh, because Tina his wife's not particularly well so best wishes to her and uh, to him and thinking of them both so um, I hope she gets well soon she's in hospital in the minute so if anyone's got any messages they want to send over to at Kyle Swagger please send him a message saying get well soon Tina. I think she's at Tina Swagger, T -E, e N A Swagger. So please send them a few get well messages. I think they'd really appreciate it if you possibly could. Um, and also, 
Um, I'm not here next week. I'm having a week off. I'm going away. And Mr. Lanigan is taking over. I know. I'm just going to host the show from down here. Lunatics running the asylum. Uh, whether it's going to be video or not, I don't know. Uh, I don't think Eric does yet. Eric, have you been drinking, dude? <laughs> No. You know it's lunchtime, but, right? <laughs> it must have been the earthquake that they just had there. I think you know. I think it is. I think it's the uh, it's the fluorescent lights that are just hitting me at such a bright daylight intensity that it screws up my circadian rhythm, and then I'm up to, up to like five a.m. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, I don't know how we're going to do it, but I think it'll be uh, very interesting. It might be audio only with some still pictures going out across mm-hmm. Wirecast next week, but there'll definitely yeah. be audio being transmitted and broadcast, and. Uh, there'll definitely be uh, an audio podcast going up at the end of it. So I need to find someone to do the same thing for Mac and Fozo, otherwise they won't be running next week. But Biggie's definitely on. Thanks to the Big L. Cheers, mate. We'll see you next week. Oh, uh, oh are you in? You go on. Uh, can we just install this update before you close, please? Install what update? <laughs> it's just, I'm just so used to it now. Hang on a minute. Yeah, done now. Okay, totally good. <laughs> see you next week. Thanks for listening. Bandwidth and hosting for Bagel Tech Big is provided by UK2.net. Web hosting for everyone.